to Check It Out, the Carnegie Stout Library's adult services podcast. This week, we have an excerpt of an interview with Lori McGee, who is a copy editor at a publishing house. We will be featuring a full-length episode of her interview later this week. We'll also talk a little bit about our canopy service that we offer through the library where you can watch movies. We have um, a contribution from a local uh, listener and reader, Ben Fisher from the Telegraph Herald. And we even have a recipe for crispy chickpeas, a healthy snack that you can have while you're reading or watching TV this week. Hey, Becky, what have you been listening or reading this week? Yeah, you can definitely say reading or listening because I have been listening to a lot of audiobooks on my long walks that I've been taking. Well, what audiobook have you been listening to? Um, I have been listening to She'll Be Gone in the Dark, Ooh. the true crime. Is that what it's yes. called? The true crime by Michelle McNamara. It's, it's, yeah, um, I've been listening to that. Yeah, it's it's um, You'll Be Gone in You'll the Dark. You'll Be Gone in the Dark. Yes, that one. I, I think, just yeah. started that. <laughs> And I've been listening to that audiobook on my long walks with my dog because it makes the time go by a little faster when we like to go out for like an hour and a half. Um, I don't listen to a ton of audiobooks, so this has been kind of a good good change for me. And I know people talk about how well written it was, and the narrator does a pretty good job of kind of expressing that. So I like it so far. Um, I've only listened to about the first hour or so so there's still quite a bit left actually it's all be gone in the dark now that i looked that up oh which goodness. i should have known because we did that as one of our book discussion <laughs> books um, oh, it was yeah. like a month ago but it feels like a year ago so. no kidding all right we can we'll, we can try it again we'll both get the title right Do you, um so when i read that book it was interesting because she jumps around chronologically so much. Yeah, absolutely. Is that confusing when you're listening to it? It is actually, especially at the beginning, it's a bunch of different crimes. And then all of a sudden we're back to the cufflinks that she was searching for. And I feel like I would have an easier time following if I was reading it and could kind of go back and flip through the pages as right. I went along. I, I think what makes it hard about that is that um, she passed away before the book was published. Right. So it was kind of, um, two other people cobbling together her notes to put it into some sort of a format. So I always wondered if that's how she intended it to be, like if that's how she would have yeah. published it, or if she, maybe it was like partially published and they just kind of followed along. Yeah, with whatever so. that they thought she was going with. I mean, I'm glad they published it. I just mm -hmm. think maybe, like you're right, if she had been able to do it herself, it would have been laid out slightly differently. So there's a couple of, because um, I looked this up, you know that podcast my favorite murder yeah mm -hmm. there's a couple episodes of that that do cover michelle mcnamara and also the golden state killer which i have not listened to yet but i have them on my list <laughs> to listen to they actually have yeah. a book that came out not that long ago stay sexy and don't get murdered and i've yeah. been meaning to do the audiobook on that one yeah true crime is um it's interesting <laughs> It is. And in the introduction, Gillian Flynn was talking about how how aware she is that she's I, entertaining herself off of someone else's tragedies with yeah. the way she phrased it. And I didn't even think about that as I'm listening. I'm like, oh, now I feel kind of bad. But I'm also interested in the reporting process and how they gather the information. So I don't know. What was really fascinating to me about that book is that, I mean, it, it took place over so many years that you tend to forget that there weren't things like DNA matches or right. cell phones or email or like these national databases where they could put in people's fingerprints. So the fact that this guy got away with so much for so long was because he did it in enough different areas that the police departments couldn't even like tie tie him to any of the crimes right. in other cities they were talking about how they had like a state lab and it was the lab tech who uh -huh. was able to help the first lead because he was the one that saw all the different cases but there was no database at that time that other stations other police officers were able to compare it to yeah it was um it was a very interesting book kind of kind of got me back into reading like true crime i used to read a lot of it i used to find it really fascinating and then I kind of got away from it. So yeah, this is I might my have first to start it again. crime book. So I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah, I like it because it's, I mean, no spoilers, but it's not super gory. <laughs> so I also appreciate it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we yeah. don't need too much gore right now. No. What about you, Sarah? What have you been reading? 
I've been reading a historical romance novel instead of a contemporary romance novel, so ch changing it up a little bit. Um, Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. It's a bit of a slow burn, and um, I wasn't anticipating this, but it's also kind of a Christmas story, so oh. that's a little different. Uh, not usually what I go for in the springtime, but still very enjoyable. <laughs> Well, it didn't have Christmas in the title, so how are you supposed to know? <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah, usually they have Christmas in the title, so. <laughs> Especially a, romances and things yeah, like that. Yeah. They usually play that up a little more, but that's okay. Yeah, so I actually switched things up a little bit. Um, I was doing a little Libby tech help with a patron over the phone and she was asking me about the Libby app and she's like, what does this little moon shape mean at the top of a book? And I was like, well, I don't know. So. In case you didn't know this, there's a little moon, and if you hit it, it reads the book for 30 minutes, and then it stops. Oh. So last oh. night, I checked out the first Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone in audio, and I hit the little 30 minutes, and I was sound asleep before it even stopped reading to me. So oh, that's <laughs> it's cool. like the, the it's sleep like timer. I'm going to break your brain. If you push and hold on that and then slide up or down, yeah. you can change how long that time period is so you can make it longer or shorter than 30 minutes oh my goodness wow. you can <laughs> my brain is broken i mean how long have we been doing tech support for libby and stuff and i just i don't do a lot of audiobooks so i was not aware of that so hey you can learn something new that's a really good day. feature I also like that you're listening to Harry Potter because well, yes. those are the only audiobooks I've listened to besides the one I'm listening to now. Well, um, I, and I think they're fantastic. I've read them so many times that I think I figure if it's something that I don't, I'm not sitting there going, "Oh my gosh, what happens next?" That I can fall asleep to it. That's very true. Because <laughs> I know what it's happens just next. Kind of so soothing to have on in the background. It is, yeah, yeah. So that's my new discovery for. You know, being quarantined, self-isolating. You know, I don't know if my cat appreciated it, but, you know, who cares? Cats don't get opinions on audiobooks. <laughs> no. No, not at all. They have too many opinions on other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As do yes. all pets, it seems. <laughs> Next up, we have an excerpt of Sarah's interview with Lori McGee. Lori is a copy editor at a publishing company, and we will be featuring a full-length episode of her interview later this week. Welcome to our Carnegie Stout podcast, Lori. Well, thank you, Sarah. I'm always happy to be on with uh, a hero. I, I love librarians. They're my heroes, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty tickled to be able to help you out. And, you know, we wouldn't have much in the library without copy editors either. We, we need those books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> uh, I think I was just really lucky and blessed that I I love books and I figured out a niche. And it's kind of like having a split personality. You have to be totally <laughs> compulsive and, and concerned with details. But when you're copying, you also have to see the big picture. So mm -hmm. I'm always doing two reads of a manuscript. You know, one that's kind of the big picture one and then a really deep detailed line edit every single line and word and <laughs> punctuation mark so it's it's fun I love it I don't know <laughs> maybe I'm just kind of uh, impulsive <laughs> I'm I think my day must be a lot like the work life of my colleagues who work in house but I just don't get interrupted as much and it's great <laughs> because I just like to put my head head down and work and I don't know. It's, it works for me. It's not for everybody. I, I think some people really miss the camaraderie of an office. And um, I, I'm very much an extrovert, but I'm also an introvert, introvert. And a friend of mine told me a long time ago that that means I'm an ambivert. <laughs> <laughs> There's a word for everything. Yeah, I guess so. I think she made that up. <laughs> Do you have any tips for because there's so many of us who are new to working from home. Um, you mentioned like organization is very important. Um, mm -hmm. but do you have other tips? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, there are going to be tasks you dislike. And sometimes I allocate those. Sometimes I do the tasks I like the least first, because then I can get them out of the way. And on my second read, I can see how I did on it. Well, I guess I do my fact checking as I go along. But 
for cross checking references and footnotes and endnotes, I might do that at a separate time just to get it out of the way. And you have mm -hmm. to style it all too. Every publishing house, even though they use the um, Chicago Manual of Style kind of as the basis for every book publishing company, each individual publisher also has their own style preferences. So that's something else you have to keep straight. Um, as far as I guess, stick to your office hours and really learn your craft of whatever you're doing on your own time. Um, I don't feel like it's uh, ethical or fair for me to be learning about grammar and usage too much. I mean, I might look up a question that I need to have answered, but mm -hmm. my degree is not in English, so I've done a lot of reading and studying on my own. And I think that's important that you continue to hone whatever you're doing and try not to fill around and get caught up. I try not to check email very much or go online. It's real easy to get distracted by going online. Yes, it is. All of a sudden you've wasted. Yeah, you know, you probably can relate to that. And that's hard for people, you know. I, mm -hmm. When I started, I didn't have the online thing. It was all done snail mail and hard copy manuscripts and the schedules were much longer. Now I've got to, you know, and I think everybody feels that pressure in every industry that the time mm. pressure to turn things around is so much quicker. Everything's more condensed. So you really have to kind of stick with your tasks. And all oh, the other thing is if you are really going to freelance and have it as your own job, I don't know what it's like for you guys working remotely just while this crazy world's going through what it's going. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you have your own business, I think it's, I mean, I keep a detailed time log and I keep track of every single, I don't have that many business expenses except for my really fancy wardrobe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is not, I, when my husband kids me and I'll say, oh yeah, I got to go get some new clothes for, for, for my office. Take me to get some sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's Come about on. it. But I do Come. keep track of all my business expenses because I have to file file estimated taxes quarterly. When I first started, I kept track of my mileage and I still keep track of office supplies. There's not that many now that everything's electronic because I don't have all the shipping and all that kind of thing I used to take care of. But I guess never miss a deadline. Stay in touch <laughs> with your, your clients. If you're open for work, be the squeaky wheel. Contact your clients and say, hey, my calendar's opened up. Learn your craft and stick with your schedule. Take breaks when you, that's the great thing though. If you're really finding it hard to concentrate, you can take a break, be flexible. I don't think this is the time right now that people are the most productive. I th I've talked to a lot of people that say it's really hard to concentrate right now on work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, t I totally get that for people. So luckily all my colleagues in New York are doing well. They're all working remotely. They're still healthy and you know, and they're still passing work along to me, which I'm very grateful for. So you'll, get, yes. you'll be getting new books at the library soon. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Lori and Sarah. Next up, Amy is going to tell us a little bit about Canopy, our movie streaming service that we offer through the library. One of the great digital offerings that the library has is called Canopy, and Canopy is streaming movies. And typically when you log in with your um, City of Dubuque library card, you get 10 play credits a month, which means you can watch 10 movies. But right now they have credit-free viewing going on, so there's a whole bunch of movies that you could watch that don't count against your 10 credits. So you could, you know, conceivably watch 20 plus movies if you wanted to during the week. Um, there's majority of the movies that are available through Canopy are like documentaries, not necessarily feature films, but there's some really, really interesting content on there that you can watch. Um, you can, you know, armchair travel. You can watch travel documentaries. They have a really great one on the national parks. It's a six part series. Ken um, Burns. That PBS originally put out. Yeah, Ken Burns. So you know it's going to be really good because he does really great stuff. Um, there are some feature films on there. Some of them you may have heard of. Some of you may not have. Uh, a lot of them I have not heard of. But <laughs> that's just how it goes with Canopy. It's a lot of the uh, indie film and international films. Yes. So the stuff that you wouldn't necessarily get to see in the theaters locally, but maybe you've heard of and are interested. 
So how specifically, Amy, do you go about finding the credit-free viewing options? So fortunately, when you go to the Canopy homepage, it's the very first tab up there. It says credit-free viewing. Um, this is something that they're only doing probably through the end of April uh, while everybody is you know, quarantining at home. at home. So I don't know how long the credit-free viewing is going to last. Possibly they'll expand it, but I kind of suspect they will not. But you still get 10, 10 movies um, that you can watch. If you have kids, you know, you can, they can pretty much watch anything. It's I different think, for children. I think one of the best hacks uh, for Canopy with kids is that if uh, you check out or start watching one of the children's films, um, you can pick 10 of those and then kids can re-watch those same 10 over and over and over for a month, mm -hmm. which well, is really something nice. that kids love to do. Exactly. Right. Really get your money's worth at least. Or well, money's in you know what yeah. I mean. Credits worth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the credits the credits do reset at the beginning of the month. So you could do all of your binging like at the end of the month and then you could watch ten more. So you could, if you started say on you know, ten days before the month ends, you could watch twenty movies in twenty days. <laughs> so you can think of it that way. <laughs> They also have a lot of the great courses, don't they? They do. I mean, you can learn how to speak Spanish. You can learn how to speak. Um, you can learn how to take pictures. Or I don't the know. There's a whole of lot of great courses. Geography or something. Yeah. Stuff for smart people. Yeah, I'm looking when it's exactly <laughs> mastering Tai Chi. I mean, that's totally something that you could do at your in your house is learn yeah. Tai Chi. That actually sounds kind of interesting. I might, I might well try Make yeah. the extra time to your advantage, right? Yes. And another thing you can do is if it's something that you're interested in, but you don't know if you want to watch right now, um, when you're logged in with your card, you can just add the video to your watch list. It's almost like a to be read list for books. So you can go back through, you can go to your watch list and be like, oh yeah, this was something that I was interested in without trying to search through it all again to find a specific movie. So it's kind of handy. You can have a huge watch list. I mean, you could have as many movies on there as you wanted. But if you put them all in right. there, it won't be helpful anymore. <laughs> well, that's true. Because <laughs> you'll be like, oh no, I forgot what these were all about. Um, if you have it up on your computer screen though, the nice thing is, is if you hover your mouse over the, the cover image of the movie, it kind of gives you a little summary of what the movie is. So you don't have to open it and read the whole summary. You can be like, yeah, I really don't want to learn about that. But oh, this one sounds really interesting, so. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, what's the website for that? Uh, it's dubuque.canopy.com, or you can also access it from the library's homepage, which is <laughs> www.dubuque.liv.ia.us, and then click on digital resources, and then you'll, you'll see a list of all our digital collections, and you'll see um, Canopy on there. So take advantage of Canopy if you get the opportunity. Next up, we have Ben Fisher. Like I said, he is a local reporter from the Telegraph Herald, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's been reading this week. Hello, I am Ben Fisher, a reporter for the Telegraph Herald. Uh, there I cover politics especially, but also environmental issues and Dubuque County government. I am working from home currently, which means I've given myself a little more time for reading. Uh, and when I read, it's typically two or three books at a time, swapped based on my mood. Uh, one that I'm reading is Old Man River, the Mississippi River in North American History. Uh, last year, the National, National Mississippi River Museum and Aquarium hosted a reading by author Paul Schneider about the book. There I was able to meet him and uh, talk about writing and surface water policy, both interests of mine as well. Um, in the book, Schneider goes from prehistory, even pre-dinosaur, all the way to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and uh, you know pollution of the river here in our backyard, uh, but with plenty of humor and personal touches. Uh, I'm also reading the Best American Short Stories 2018, uh, collection. This edition of the annual series is edited by Roxanne Gay, uh, author of An Untamed State and other uh, books, um, who brings a political author's eye to uh, her selections of short fiction. Uh, her picks have plenty of varying styles as well, uh, something for everyone. 
Uh, summer always makes me think of a few favorite books I return to often uh, with Winter's Thaw. Uh, the American, the Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay, uh, for instance, by Michael Cabon. It's a kind of swashbuckling um, historical fiction and just rich look at the many facets of identity and history uh, set before, during, and after World War II and the great comic book revolution of that time. Uh, also, Sag Harbor by Colson Whitehead. It's a semi-autobiographical novel that just crackles with the detail of memory, uh, set in the first predominantly black uh, summer vacation community on the East Coast in the 1980s. Um, thirdly, really, especially now, uh, is Actual Air uh, by songwriter and poet David Berman, who died late last year, which is just one of my favorite collections ever. Thanks again, Ben, for sharing with us. If there's anything that you've been reading, watching, or listening to that you would like to share with us, just send a short audio file to your librarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us, and we will go ahead and feature it in a future episode of our podcast. Next up, we have Sarah with a crispy chickpea snack recipe that you can make for when you are reading or watching TV this week. This is Sarah with a snack recipe that's quick, versatile, and you probably already have the ingredients in the cupboard. What are we making? Crispy oven chickpeas, a crunchy, savory snack to meet your craving for popcorn or chips. I first made this recipe after my mom clipped it from a newspaper and mailed it to me. I lost that original recipe, but whenever I forget what to create the oven to or some other detail, I just Google some variation on crispy oven chickpeas and several strangers come to my rescue. First, we'll start with what you need, a can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans. You can start with dried chickpeas, but you'll need to prep and cook them first, and that takes forever. So use a can if you've got one to save yourself a little time. Next, you'll need oil. You can use vegetable, canola oil, avocado oil, whatever, just not olive oil. Olive oil doesn't play nicely at higher temperatures. I went with vegetable oil because that's what I had, salt, and your choice of seasoning. I went with curry powder, but you do you. You could use ranch powder, uh, barbecue rub, whatever sounds delicious to you. You're also going to need a baking sheet or pan, something with a shallow lip and a lot of surface area, a strainer, a bowl, and a kitchen towel or paper towels, or both. If you have parchment paper, that will make your life easier. First, Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Some recipes say 400 degrees, which can make everything go faster, but you might end up with less of a crunch or burn chickpeas or both. So I stick with 350. Next, you need to drain and thoroughly rinse your can of chickpeas. That's what the strainer's for. Once they're rinsed, you'll need to pat your chickpeas dry with your cloth or paper towels. Pick out any of the loose chickpea skins, but don't feel like you need to peel every bean. It's more important that you get them as dry as you possibly can. Next, drum the clean, dry chickpeas into your bowl, add a tablespoon of oil, and like a teaspoon or two of salt. Mix it all up. If you had parchment paper, cover your baking pan with it. Then dump your chickpeas on the pan and spread them out. Don't get too worried about spacing everything perfectly. As long as it isn't one big lump, you're good. If your oven is up to 350 degrees, stick your tray in there and set a timer for 40 to 50 minutes, depending on how hot your oven runs. You might need to leave them in there for longer or pull them out early. Use this cooking time to clean your dishes or take a nap, maybe both. Finally, after 45 minutes, give or take, of waiting, get your tray out of the oven, let it cool for five minutes or so, and then dump the chickpeas into a serving bowl. This could be the bowl from earlier that you cleaned. Add your seasoning powder to taste. I went with about three teaspoons of curry powder, and then you get to eat them. I read online that these will keep for several days, but I have no idea because I generally polish off the whole bowl that evening. I hope you get to try this recipe and happy snacking. 
We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Check It Out, Carnegie Stout Library's Adult Services Podcast. A big thank you goes out to Ben Fisher and Lori McGee for their contributions. And as always, thank you to Ben Eagle for recording and performing our theme song. We hope that you'll join us for next week's episode of Check It Out. Thank you.